Welcome back to this series about organic molecules. In this lesson, we'll see where some of the real magic in organic chemistry lies. The molecules we are going to discuss today are all around you in your daily life and in the products that we all use. When we started learning about organic molecules, we learned about some of the amazing molecules that carbon makes in our bodies and in all living things. All these discoveries and even the production of these chemicals would not be possible without carbon chemistry. Organic chemistry has provided many medicines in the last century, and without it, our lives would be very different. The ability to fight HIV with new drugs is only possible because organic chemists can manufacture these compounds. This amazing chemical is called nevirapine. Hospitals and clinics issue this drug to help prevent the HIV virus from spreading from a mother to her child during birth. It is also one of the medicines given to HIV patients to help them live longer, healthier lives all round. All these wonderful molecules make our lives so much better. But where does the carbon come from? Most of it comes from oil. Today we will pay close attention to just how this strange black substance is so useful. You'll learn how much we depend on it to make the substances which make life easier. <laughs> By the end of this lesson, you should be able to list and describe the different hydrocarbons found in oil. Explain how these hydrocarbons in oil are separated from each other and describe what happens when hydrocarbons are used as fuel. I think this calls for some kind of field trip. South Africa is not blessed with natural oil deposits of its own, so it must be brought here in big ships. We'll start by seeing what happens when it arrives here. Oil is a very viscous substance. This means that it is thick and does not flow easily. Once it is pumped out from deep in the ground, it is placed into ships called tankers. These massive ships transport the oil around the world to places where it can be separated into many useful products. The oil on its own is not as useful as the products we get from separating it. After separation, many organic compounds can be made. The problem is that oil is made of literally thousands of substances. We must separate them to make use of these chemicals. How do we achieve this? Once the thick black oil arrives here at the refinery, the oil can be separated because the substances inside it boil at different temperatures. Do you remember the scientific name for separating liquids by their boiling points? In another lesson, we saw how liquids can be separated by their boiling points. This is called fractional distillation. Because the molecules in these compounds had different structures, they had different boiling points. This allowed us to separate them from one another quite easily. The compounds in oil are separated in much the same way. Philip has agreed to explain this to us. Hello again. I've got an exciting journey to take you on. Check this out. The building you see here is a furnace. In it, the oil is heated to temperatures between 280 degrees Celsius and 480 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine that heat? At these temperatures, the oil boils and turns into gases. Once the oil is made into vapor, it moves into this building where it is separated into parts or fractions. For this reason, it is called the fractionating column. The hot gases cool as they move up the building or fractionating column. Each layer in the building cools down the gases to a lower temperature. As a result, at each layer, the temperature will become low enough for some of the compounds in the mixture to condense. Let's have a look. Here we see that as temperature decreases, the compounds that have the same boiling points turn into liquids. They do this at the same place. 
In this way, they are separated from each other. The rest that have lower boiling points continue up the fractionating column. At the top of the fractionated column, the compounds with the lowest boiling points come out. These are often gases at room temperature and are placed into cylinders. This is the same gas we use for cooking and heating in our homes. It is called LPG, or liquid petroleum gas. Can you see why I get so excited about organic molecules? Let's have another look at the fractional distillation column so that we can really understand the impact of the fractional distillation process in our lives. Here is a group of chemicals called naphtha with very low boiling points. Gasoline, paraffin oils, diesel oils, lubricating oils, fuel oils, and the residue here with the highest boiling point. Amazingly, we all know and probably use every one of these types of chemicals in our lives. The liquids called naphtha have a very low boiling point, which makes them highly flammable. For this reason, they are excellent fuels. The gasoline from the distillation column is used to make our petrol. Petrol has just the right boiling points to mix easily with air. This mixture burns inside the engine to produce the energy that we need for transport and industry. Diesel and paraffin are liquids that have much higher boiling points than gasoline. They need a much higher temperature to begin burning and this allows them to be stored and used more safely. Fractional distillation also produces much thicker substances, like lubricating oils and waxes. These substances are very viscous. This means that they do not flow easily. Often a high boiling point indicates that a substance may be viscous as well. Can you think why substances that do not boil very easily are often viscous? Substances like wax that have a very high boiling point have strong intermolecular forces. These forces make it very difficult for molecules to move past one another. This makes them more viscous. The product that comes out of the fractional distillation column at the bottom is tar or asphalt. You can see that this substance is very viscous. We use tar to make the roads. Without this substance, perhaps our roads and highways would be very different and transport would be extremely difficult. I hope you're convinced now. Oil products touch every part of our lives, from the roads we drive on to the petrol in cars and taxis, even parts of the pens, rulers, chairs, and paints in the classroom are made from oil products. I've had a lot to say today. Now, Amir is going to explain how and why separation takes place inside the fractionating column. It was really fascinating to learn about the multitude of products we can make from the hydrocarbons in oil. There is a reason for the way the different molecules separate from each other during distillation. It's all about their structure. Oil is made of many hydrocarbons. These hydrocarbons are different from one another. Some are longer than others. The longer molecules have a larger surface area to attract other molecules. It would take more energy to break them apart from other molecules. I'm sure you get the idea. The longer a hydrocarbon molecule is, the stronger the forces attracting them to each other. This, of course, results in a higher boiling point. Let's apply this concept to fractional distillation. When oil is heated, the lighter molecules always boil first and rise to the highest point in the fractionating column, a bit like these short molecules here. Remember that all of these hydrocarbons are nonpolar, so they cannot form hydrogen bonds. They are only held to one another by van der Waals forces. As the molecular mass or size of a molecule increases, the van der Waals forces become stronger. This explains why larger molecules are more difficult to boil out of the mixture. It's really amazing to see how complicated this oily black substance is. But did you notice most of the substances derived from oil are excellent fuels? This means that they burn in air to release energy. This is the same energy that's used to drive the vehicles that are so important in our lives. Without them, the economy would simply not function and many people would be without jobs. These hydrocarbons all need oxygen to burn. 
This is usually from air. The carbon and hydrogen atoms inside the molecules combine with the oxygen molecule and produce carbon dioxide and water. In the process, a large amount of heat is made and this can be used to cook food, heat our homes or even drive a car forward. Now, to show this combustion as a chemical reaction, let's use liquid petroleum gas, like propane, found in normal laboratory or cooking gas. Firstly, the formula for hydrocarbons like this one is written down and added to oxygen from the air. Remember that oxygen is diatomic, so we see its formula here is O2. Then we write down the products. If there is enough oxygen available, the combustion products are carbon dioxide and water, like this. Can you see that the reaction is not balanced? To balance the equation, we have to have the same number of carbon atoms first, then hydrogen atoms, and finally oxygen atoms on both sides of the equation, something like this. We need a 3 in front of CO2 here. Now add 4 to H2O to give 8 hydrogens on both sides. Finally, since there are 10 oxygen atoms on the right side already, we need to add a 5 here. The reaction is now balanced. Well, I'm sure you can do something on your own now. Write out a reaction which represents what occurs when ethene burns in oxygen. Remember to use the correct chemical formula for each one. Firstly, we start by showing that the formula of ethene is C2H4. Oxygen is O2. If you remember from earlier, we said that carbon dioxide and water were the products. Did you also balance the reaction completely? There we have it. A balanced chemical reaction for the combustion of ethane in oxygen. C2H4 plus 3O2 gives us 2CO2 plus 2H2O. Wow, that was a lot of information about oil and similar products. I hope you will look closely at the world around you. It is very hard to miss the great impact of oil on the way that we live and work. Here is a task for you to think about and discuss in your classroom or with friends. <laughs> discuss the role of paraffin in South African households. One, as a fuel, and two, in medicines. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, but join us next time when we'll be discussing how scientists and chemical engineers manufacture all these weird and wonderful chemicals. For more information on organic molecules and related topics, please visit our website on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.